Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're doing a house call on this 2009 Subaru Outback. The customer said that her passenger airbag indicator says on all the time, even when there's no one in the passenger seat, and she's wondering if that's a problem. So we're here to take a look at the Subaru. Scanned it for codes, first and foremost, and in the airbag module, we have three codes. Try clearing them, they come right back. Passenger airbag indicator failure, so I've seen that one before. Belt tension sensor failure and ODS failure, that's occupant detection system, I believe. So, that's what the car is doing, and in the, um, the overhead console here that I've taken down, I figured if this is more interesting than just resoldering some LEDs. You can see that one's intermittent. This middle one is not lighting up at all. Let's try that again. So definitely some bad contacts. So the middle one should say passenger airbag. I don't know if you guys can make that out. Right one says off, the left one says on. But there are three codes. So would fixing this problem resolve the other two codes? I don't know, but we have to resolder this little board uh, quick and easy. We'll do that on the bench and clear the codes, see if that resolves the issue. All right, here we are back in my truck. Here's the little board, and here's our TS100 magic soldering iron. So let's fire that up, get a little bit of fresh solder, and we'll just go over these pins. So you can see there are five wires. So you want to re-solder one, two, three, four, five joints here. <clears throat> and then for the LEDs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then there's some resistors on the back. Usually those don't go bad. So we'll start with the wires and see if that fixes the issue. So a little pre tin. And let's go to town. We're going to make these joints better than factory. Northridge Fix would be proud, except for we're not using flux because the solder is flux core. And okay, so those four are done. Quick and easy. Should we reflow the, the actual LED? pins we should so let me touch those up real quick Two more. Last one. Okay, let's go plug it in. See what happens. All right, here are the four LEDs. Let's see. Key on. Okay. So the middle one. Oh, did the middle one try to come on? It's still a little finicky. You can see if I flex the board a little bit. So maybe it's one of the surface mount resistors that's messed up. Try that again. Yep, let's go over the resistors. But the other two seem to work just fine. See that right there, the middle one should be on all the time. Okay, so I flowed these three components, 331, I, I think those are resistors. So both sides, nice and shiny. And we have one, two, three, four, five little components on the back. Let's see if that made the difference. All right, moment of truth. Yes. So do a little tap test, wiggle check. See that LED stays on and now this right one stays on because I'm in the seat. 
If I get out of the seat. Should say off. Well, if I'm sitting in the seat, it should say on, right? Well, let's clear the ETCs, see if any of them go away. Read fault code. I guess we have to back out. <clears throat> go back in the airbag. Okay, clear fault memory, yes, yes. What are the chances of two problems coming up at the same time? Well, I don't know. We definitely fixed the indicators. It says clear fault memory failed. Check whether the following if the engine's off or whether the faults have been rectified. So read fault code, we still have these three codes. We can try clear DTCs again. So maybe the occupant detection system 29 failed. But I mean, how could three things fail at once? I just don't understand. Occupant detection system. So we have two codes. This 29 and a 2C that are stored in the health report. So the 26 we fixed by reflowing solder joints. So 2C and 29. Let's look those up in OEM service info. So the 29 is ODS failure. Occupant detection sensor is faulty. Control module is faulty. Harness is faulty. Rear airbag harness is faulty. Or, or we're missing power to this module. So it's, it basically says check the connector. And then check diagnostic code. Is 2C present? Yes. It says yes, perform diagnostics according to each DTC. So let's go to this 2C, belt tension sensor failure. Passenger seat belt tension sensor is faulty. Or airbag main harness circuit is open or shorted. Or occupant detection control module is faulty. So belt tension sensor, and it goes to the occupant detection module under the seat. Then there's a power supply to the module. Okay. Um, check for port contacts. Check built tension sensor. Disconnect the belt tension sensor from the airbag harness. Connect test harness to test harness AC. Connect the battery ground terminal. Okay, so basically they're substituting something for this belt tension sensor. Check airbag harness connector. Da, 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 da. Check airbag harness. Check airbag harness. So we have the seat up. Let's do some checks. All right, so our three codes are still present. Let's turn off the key, unplug the little module, which, let's see, it's under the seat. So the module is right here, this box, right there, and then it looks like there is an actual pressure sensor that's somehow is connected to here. So maybe when you sit on it, it increases the pressure in some, some kind of pillow. I don't know. Let's at least check powers and grounds to this module. Okay, so verify that the power, pin 9, red wire, is fine. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so with the module unplugged, we get an extra code, ODS communication error. So this module can talk to the main airbag controller. So we want to find out this belt tension sensor failure. We want to focus on this. Interesting. So with the module plugged back in, clear the codes that failed, and all four codes are stored now. So this, these codes will not clear until the whole system is good. So we fixed 26. We caused 27 by unplugging the module. So... 2C is still an issue. We could try cutting power to the airbag module completely, resetting it that way, and see if just one code comes back, then we'll be, you know, kind of more confident. But um, something's wrong with this seat belt tensioner. <sighs> Finally, located the passenger seat belt tension sensor. So it's part of that 
belt buckle. See the wires going in right to the black assembly and here's the connector. I got it unplugged. And there's like, I don't know if that's OEM. Looks like duct tape to me. Might be OEM. So, I don't know if this assembly is bad. We can at least check the wiring integrity from here, from the harness to the seat. But I don't really know how to check the sensor. They just say plug in a replacement and if it's good, the light should go out. Okay, so let's do some voltage measurements right at this connector. I'm guessing that the red, black, and blue is supply, ground, and signal. So it goes like that. So the first pin should be some kind of supply. I'm guessing five volts. Hey, five volts, okay. Middle pin. 2.8 millivolts steady, so I like that, it's steady. Um, I'm not gonna load it because it's a sensing circuit and I don't know what that module does. Signal wire, 2.5, 2.6, it's actually going up. Is that good? Is that bad? It's coming from somewhere. So it has to be coming from the detection module, 3.3, 3.2. So there's something on that wire, somewhere in the middle. We can try plugging in the sensor and see what the voltage is on that blue wire. Just kind of back probe it. I don't know what else to try. So it looks like 0.5 volts. Let me pull on it like, like it's tensioning something. You know, if we can 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so it's floating. That's not good. It should be rock steady. But the floating was coming from the occupant detection from the module side, not from the sensor side. I think the sensor is doing what it should. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. But we might need an occupant detection system module. So you guys can see the meter there, 0.5 volts. So I'm just gonna push and pull. There's actually, it looks like there's a little spring in here. Does anything change? 0.6, still 0.6. It's gotta be a tensioner fault. This should change at least a little bit. Man, this is nuts, stupid thing. Let's see if we unplug it again. What's going to be our signal? About three volts. Right, raising up a little bit. So it looks like this tensioner can pull or pull the voltage up or down. So this is kind of a bias and it's floating because there's nothing connected to it. So I think the tensioner is bad indeed like the code said. So we'll look that up. I, it looks like it might be part of the seat belt, unfortunately. So that kind of sucks. Remember, no guesswork. So what can we do to trick the module into thinking we have a good sensor? It's just a zero to five volt analog. There's no fancy pulse width modulated nonsense here. Can we put in a, a resistor and see if the system clears the codes and if it's happy? That way we'll be 100% sure that the only thing we need is this tensioner. AES Wave. Not only do you get these amazing adapters, you also get a potentiometer. So three wire, now I adapted it. I put some of my own banana leads on there so I can also put a voltmeter on here while we're dialing in this resistance. So we have the red and the black is the five volt and ground, and the blue is the signal. So, as I spin the little knob right here, our voltage, we can make it go up or down anywhere between zero and five volts. So I'm just gonna set it somewhere in the middle. You can see we're about, you know, it's a zero to 10K resistor, so we're about five kilo ohms, but it's a voltage divider, so 2.4, okay? Let's 
do key on, airbag, enter. Okay, read fault code. So we have these four codes, but the airbag light is off. So that's promising. Can we clear the codes now? Yes, yes. Clear fault memory completed. Amazing, no trouble codes. We're done. That was pretty sweet. So bypass test, whenever you can bypass a component that you suspect is bad and check the rest of the system, that's a huge win. Now we're 150% sure that everything else is good under the seat, wiring, harness. The only thing wrong here is the seat belt tension sensor in this passenger seat belt. Now, unrelated problem we already fixed was the, um, the passenger airbag indicator that just required some soldering. So separate issue. But how did this car, you know, get two issues at the same time? I don't know, maybe the owner just drove it around and didn't notice the airbag light until, until recently and the issues added up. So we'll, uh, we'll quote him for a new seatbelt. I don't know, <laughs> the whole assembly, I guess you gotta just replace the whole thing. It's ridiculous. Why can't you just replace the tension sensor? Safety, but it comes at a price, I guess. So the whole thing, this is attached to the seatbelt. You can't take it apart, I don't think. So that's it. If the customer wants a repair, we'll be back. But if not, that's the diagnosis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Look what we got for the Subaru Outback. Brand new seat belt assembly for the passenger's front side. There it is. Same color. Here is our tension sensor. Let's Let's bench test it before we go install it on the car. So I have a 5 volt supply right here. Connect to the red and the black wires. And then I'm measuring the voltage on the signal wire. So what do we have right now? About 1 volt. So I'm going to pull on it. Fantastic. Tension sensor works great. So. We'll install this on the vehicle, should be fixed. Installing the new right hand seat belt. So I removed the old one, pretty straightforward. If you need any instructions there. So this is the old one, looks identical to the brand new one. So let's install it, clear the codes and make sure the warning light stays off. New seat belt assembly is plugged in, so pre-tensioner and that tension sensor. Let's see what happens when we turn the key on. The airbag light should go out. Unless we have to clear the codes. Oh, there it goes. It's out, so that's a fix. So I'm just going to get in here and clear the codes out. So I guess the code was right. There's a tension sensor malfunction just broke I don't know why and uh, you have to replace the whole thing so it's not not a cheap fix but for safety you know do it right OEM parts of course and uh, luckily they're still available so with that thanks a lot for watching we'll see you on the next one bye bye